Hello, hello, hello. How are you, sir? Hello, um, Ben. I'm fine. I'm well, Hugh. Thank you. And uh, Lorraine, I'm very well. How are you? Ah, oh, not too bad at all. It's been a little while since we've done um, uh, a show. It's been a couple of weeks or more, uh, obviously due to what's been happening at the moment. But it's lovely to have you on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. Uh, you know something, you know, when, when, when we spoke, um, recently, and we spoke about, you know, the hair care business and where you were going, what you were doing. It was so important to get in touch with you and so, sort of put it out there for people to see, because this is not going to be a one-off situation where, we are gonna, where we're going to have conversations, because I can see that we've got many things that we can work upon. And um, while I'm speaking to you, I'd just like to say um, that when people make changes in life and in business it's sometimes very traumatic and what we have today is what's gone on with the point pandemic and the fact yeah. that you i have witnessed you going to people on their door knocking on their door and giving them the products that they have ordered that is absolutely fantastic <laughs> and the shock on some of the people's faces yeah so <laughs> And also, as well, sometimes give them a nice makeover as well, which is tremendous. And yeah. I'm sure, obviously, within these times as well, that's going to make anybody feel good, you know? So welcome. <laughs> and it's lovely to be able to hear your story and perhaps, you know, let me share some nuggets of your, um, you know, of your uh, business knowledge base with uh, some of the members here. So thank you very much for coming on. And Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure. Can we... Can we first of all ask you from the myriad of businesses and things that you know and have been dealing with, I think I would like to start with where did, what's your education, where are you from? And then we can start on what is the business thereafter. So right. where are you from? Who are you, sir? Who are you? <laughs> so let's jump, let's jump into this. Let's jump into this. So I'm Grenadian. I'm Grenadian by birth, as a matter of fact. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yes, I, as I, I like many other black kids in the seven in the sixties, I came to England as a as a child, uh, as a child, sort of Windrush generation. Yeah. Um, my mother Agatha Clement, Agatha Clement came to this country in nineteen, I think it was nineteen fifties, late fifties, yeah, and okay. subsequently she, um, as per usual, she would uh, the mothers or the parents would, would then have the children follow them uh, to the. To the UK, uh, because that was in those days the, the land of milk and honey. We were told. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we were told, and so as a result, many people, my mother included. In fact, my mother's a single single parent. I'm a, from a single parent family. My mother came to England, and she trained as a nurse, became a SR, and all single handedly, and brought hmm. up four children all by her lonesome. Wow. wow! Yeah. And wow. so yeah. she's indeed the true matriarch. Um, mm -hmm like many, many other Caribbean women. There need to be a film, Hugh and Guy, there needs to be a <laughs> film solely on black women. Okay? Yes, I agree. Uh, because not, they that's are, amen uh, to that. Uh, uh, listen, they are indeed the phenomenal ones that we've been, uh, you know, we've heard lots of stories about, about other cultures, but black women are indeed phenomenal. Well, oh, you know what, the, tr the truth is, is that black women have produced so many of our geniuses of our um, entrepreneurs and it's from that one woman i mean i'm not dis discarding yeah. you know the male and the female no, their husband and wife right. who've been there together showing the direction but to actually be a single parent giving your child the direction and the moral grounds by which they stand firm to then make the changes and transitions in life Black women can only be applauded. And if we could find other words to say how great they are, we should be out there saying them. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And, and that's why, guys, I have her just above my head here. She's right there. Yes. In her, in her yes. younger days, as a 27-year-old woman from the Caribbean and six foot tall. I mean, absolutely great. So, so, I, came to, so I came to this country as a young lad. And I, I have to confess, like most young boys, uh, who and in fact that was shown recently on BBC. I didn't watch the program, 
but mm -hmm. we've all suffered some kind of trauma some kind of bigotry and it's yeah. interestingly it was the bigotry and the covert racism at school mm -hmm. that thrusted me into the into the hairdressing industry oh yeah I, okay i knew at a very early age as a young lad i'm from acton by the way guys in west london okay acton. i was going to ask you that <laughs> yes right as a young lad going to acton county school in fact it was a a, a a grammar school just turned comprehensive so you can well imagine the very stoic sensibilities very kind of old burial fashion but there were indeed racism that was so stealth, so covert, he didn't understand it, but I recognized it at a very early age. And mm -hmm. I swore to myself, when I leave school, I'm not going to work with the man, so to speak, for the one yeah, 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 yeah. the man. And it's interesting, I remember going to my barber shop in Acton, uh, a, a, a gentleman by the name of John Rankin from Jamaica, um, mm -hmm. kind of St. Elizabeth kind of geezer and yeah. his business partner, Miss Olive. I remember asking John to train me to be a barber because of course, you have to remember Hugh, you have to remember guys, hair, whether it's barbering or hairdressing, mm -hmm. is the economic linchpin, is the economic cornerstone of mm -hmm. our, if, if I go all yeah. black communities, be it mm -hmm. America, the Caribbean, Africa, hairdressing is indeed a force to be reckoned with okay mm. it's an identity uh, exactly listen. you know and even even if even if we look at that as an identity recently i read a, a little um a little report and it said that um the cane roll used to be used during the slave trade during the slavery to actually jot down a map of how to get somewhere and that was yeah. the code by which people read and they would actually see in the cane road to say, you've got to turn left at the riverbank yeah. and right. And so that became something that, you know, we see cane roll and we say, oh, people are trying to, you know, take our style away. But the people who are trying to take those styles don't actually understand the history of what exactly. actually happens with the hair. So, you very know. Good, very good point. Um, the cane roll or the corner row is indeed an anachronism. It's, it's lived mm -hmm. in many ages and many times. Mm -hmm. right from the from 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 eons and i think it's interesting yeah. to think that we actually created that style and as we're talking about style and hairdressing black hair is indeed at the forefront of all other hair types bearing in mind mm -hmm. yeah we, we have been on the planet first we were here first on the planet mm -hmm. yeah so That's it's only right. natural that black hair at its peak if you were to take black hair back in, in, into antiquity You'll see how the great queens of antiquity, the Candace queens, as I refer to them, uh, yes. have lasted for 140 dynasties, right? Mm. Almost over 5,000 years of rulership. So you had mm -hmm. a people on the planet that was ruling the planet and the world mm. for 5,000 years. In those days, no other culture existed. And if they did exist, they would have been just ragtag cultures mm -hmm. running around in the dirt and the mire of Europe. And it's interesting uh, who you saw hairstyles that were created by our ancestors in Kemet. Call it Africa, call it Egypt. Yeah. The hair, mm -hmm. every hairstyle was born out of our people. Every tool, every implementation to style hair came out of our people. Every condition, every product came from our people. Absolute, you know. And here you are. You are well. You, you know what? You started. Um, your own hair care product recently, but you've been in the business for a very long time. So let's talk about where your experience is from that past, um, perspective in terms of the business of hair. Where did that start from? Yeah, for you. Right. Yeah. Where did it start for you? So before I jump into this, right? Yeah. And, and I'm saying this because I want to, we must always embellish our culture. We must always uplift our cultural esteem. It's important mm -hmm. because our children are constantly in a quandary mom what's this why is this who says this mm. there's something called afrophobia and our children are being made to feel inferior when in actuality their hair and their and who they are are in the great ones now i started mm, hairdressing in 1976 i went to the iconic and legendary splinters in mayfair of all places mm -hmm. yeah. um, i remember that oh blimey that's when i had hair that's right that's right, that's right. 
Uh, it was owned by the by the legendary Winston Isaacs, who was indeed one of the greatest hairdressers on the planet, uh, besides a man called Pierre Toussaint of the of the 17th century. Now, Winston, uh, Spencer's was actually an American salon, and Winston mm -hmm. was the British partner, right? Okay. And uh, as a young man, I, I remember having spoken to my barber. I went into the I, I, I went into, into the Western with my girlfriend, and I sat into this most palatial salon in Mayfair, in mm. fact, 32 Maddox Street in Mayfair. Now, yeah. isn't it interesting, guys? There was a black business in the heart of Mayfair right. that exactly. thrived for over 30 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well oiled. Wow. Wow. Okay? And, and a lot was, of people don't know that. Well, well so here's the thing. You, it, it was an ecosystem. When you think of, and it was interesting, it was run by black people patronized by black people and there, the, and there are multiple aspects of black businesses that mm. thrived and kind of coalesced with splinters because he had yeah. the, he had the uh, electrician he had the plumber he had the yeah. carpenter he had the suppliers which was dyke and dryden this was mm. a black business and 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 remember there are many shops like winston like splinters in those days because there are yeah. shops in brixton harlesden that's North right London. Yeah. So we were indeed in that time, oh my God, Hugh, that was poweronomics at its highest, blackonomics mm. at its highest in the mm. 70s. Right and that was, that was also supported, as you said, there by Dyke and Dryden, because they actually, you know, started on a premise that, you know, if you're going to do hair, there are many other products, not only for hair, but many other products and many other um, businesses that they can work in tandem with. So Splinters was actually getting a lot of what Drake and Dryden were actually doing and the benefits because people are starting to learn how to work together. So, well, you know. Well, I mean, Dyke and Dryden was more than manufacturers. I mean, they were actually, yeah. uh, Dyke and Dryden had, uh, you know, the finance colleges and schools. Uh, I think Dyke and Dryden worked in um, collaboration with people like Joan Psalms. Uh, yeah. So there's a college up there in North London. Okay. And all they were doing was continuing the tradition of successful black businesses. Bear mm. in mind, the founding mother, the, patri the matriarch of hairdressing, would be Madame C.J. Walker and Annie yeah. Malone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Out, of that, out of that stable came a guy called S.B. Turner, one of the first billionaires in America in the 1950s. Out, yeah, well. of, out of that lineage, you had a guy called Joe joe um the johnson family who created jet magazine ebony magazine yeah, and, right, yes. and afro sheen he says mm -hmm. See, i'm good with this right and, out, and alongside him you had a guy called dudley joe dudley who created dudley's who's one of the biggest manufacturers and one of the biggest exhibition in the united states that produced mm. that you know for afro hair right yes. and out of that lineage you come down to a guy called coma Contrell, Cottrell, who created uh pro line so at the same time, these guys were creating, if you like, uh, this revolution in terms of business, entrepreneurship and millionaire. You had Dyke and Dryden in London doing exactly the same thing. So yes. the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that, as I said, Afro hairdressing is the corner, the economic cornerstone of our community. And yeah. all I'm saying is that I'm, I'm saying this to say that whoever is watching and listening to this, we need to get behind the beauty industry in this country mm. because it's worth mm. 2.5 billion pounds per year and other mm. communities are making money from us precisely yes i mean that is when you look at the point. wealth of talent that there is i mean today if you said okay sit down and just take a look around you at the hair and beauty the cosmetics the health the you know the lifestyle yep. we're actually running things on a different dimension but the thing is what we have to do is support our businesses because a lot of us want to support our businesses by just the word of mouth. As in, yeah, I know about this place, but I haven't been down there or I haven't introduced that place to my friends who probably need to use their, their, um, their, 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 their equipment or whatever mm. that they want. So it's for us yes. to publicize all our businesses in all their strengths and not just say oh they're expensive because yeah but we, i also think as well that's like to cut a question is that we can learn a lot from splinters and dyke and dryden really and truly 
even now, right? And my, for me, uh, before we really do, you know, uh, find out a little bit more about you, Derek, is is the fact that Splinters was able to last that, you know, so long um, operating as a black business with black clients, with black staff, you know what I mean? Supplies and everything. So I would say to you, in your opinion, what has gone wrong now? You know, if you spin what is happening? What is happening now that you know we're not seeing that happening um, all over? If it's well, happening, me... Benfield, we've not continued that that process, have we? Um, right. I mean, you know, you know what's happened, and it's not difficult to understand. I mean, there are mm. challenges, there are obstacles, there are traps set for us. There are gatekeepers in this great country of ours, and what's yep. taking place right now. And when I say what's taking place right now is indeed an example. It's indeed a mm. metaphor of what happened in the past. They could change the game over and over and over again. That, that's going to disenfranchise us as a people. And if you think of the COVID situation, what is it doing? What it's doing for me indirectly is actually allowing us to wake up and go back and to understand how to mm. sustain ourselves, not just from a health point of view, but from a business point of view. So what happened to Splinters and many other businesses in London? We had we had St. Clair's, we had uh, people like uh, Enoch Williams in, in Brixton, mm. we had people like uh, in Harlesden, we had people like Mr. Norman, we had Mia Migos, all these people, St. Clair's made a, a lot of money back in the day, just yeah. like Splinters mm. did in Shepherd's Bush, and they were all said Marble Arch. Now, I mean, it's easy to understand what happened. Sometimes our children doesn't pick up the mantle, if you like, and carry the, and, and, and understand the significance of generational wealth. Our kids mm. are something being the distracted. Legacy. Yeah. The, the, you know, the legacy. Uh, they become distracted. I know guys, I've got friends who, who work for, uh, whose family are doing very well and very successful. And they would, they would ignore the family business and work for other people. So it's very easy sometimes to distract our people. And then, of course, we talk about belief in ourselves. As you yeah. just alluded to, Hugh, we need that, that, that belief in ourselves to, to support. Um, it's interesting. Uh, something came across my mind today. I was listening to Dr. Claude Anderson, and he quoted a, a famous mm. Greek philosopher, mm. as Diogenes. Diogenes yeah. was an interesting guy in the days of Henry Alexander the Great. He used to walk around the town in Corinth, with a lantern in his hands, he lived in a barrel, and he said that he's looking for, he's looking to shine a light on on honest people. So I think mm -hmm. what it is we need to do now is to also do something rather similar. We need to shine a light and to show and to, and 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 to 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 awake the vision in people to understand that there are black businesses out there. You guys have recognized yeah. what we are doing, and you are supporting this concept, and you are supporting black entrepreneurship. Right and black shepherdship and allowing yeah. us to 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 to, to feel like cast the light of what we are doing. So we need mm. much more of that. Perhaps then back then for the Winston Isaacs and the Sinclairs. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I know it was very difficult for black companies in those days to to, mm. to get funds, if you like, to expand. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, that's Bear right. in mind, you must understand this. If you are a white brand in the in, in the same industry in those days, it is very easy to be funded by multinationals companies yes. with so much dough that they would finance and support your business in fact all the white companies whether yeah. it's uh whether it's um think of names on the high street um yeah uh, i mean we no, don't need to understand. name them but yeah, no, we yeah, understand yeah, yeah, the yeah, premise yeah, yeah. now yeah. these guys you have to remember they're in there in the white industry you've got the trade magazines like hair and beauty right yeah they have a way of embellishing their their white hairdressers. We don't have that in our industry. We don't mm. have the magazines in London, right? Mm. And when we did have a magazine back in the day, it was kind of you know wishy washy. Whereas in the white mm. industry, what they do, they celebrate the artist. And before you know it, they get awards every year. And before mm -hmm. they know it, before you know it, these guys are being whooped up by L'Oreal and Weller and Schwarzkopf right, okay. and this multi and yeah. these people are and it's and perpetuated, working. continues. Right, we don't yeah, have but you see. One of the things that, as you just said that, I just, I just thought that the, one of the processes, we don't have our own people celebrating our own success in that way. We might see what's going on in America, but we need to start getting on board in celebrating the industries that we have, because that's one th area that we are lacking. So, Absolutely. you know, 
I think perhaps they are. Um, however, we we don't know about them. I mean, I do know that that you know there are particular award ceremonies that that take place every year. Obviously, this year being a very difficult time, and so on to showcase businesses and so on. But yeah, quite rightly, I think now is the time that people are more aware. Can we say right? Uh, so going forward, in terms of putting things on and 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 letting people know where to find businesses, where to find you, and celebrating them with awards and so on and magazines. Those things are there now. And I think those, they are fledgling, but I think come this time in a year's time, you know, we will be, you know, seeing a lot more of these of these ceremonies and, and what is happening out there and actually being able to, to, to visit and, and go and support them, you know, in the flesh. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I know it's, 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 it's what now, what, maybe 30 years on, but I just think now is the time that people are actually realizing, do you know what, we had that back in, you know, the 80s or 90s or whatever. So we are going to start again. It's, it's almost be like rebirth. being rebirth, isn't it? Yeah. It's like we're starting again, that right. whole process. We're like doing it properly from the ground up and for ourselves and not relying on you know the big businesses that it's, we put so it's all about businesses. it's all about the collaboration but you know what the most important thing is you're here today yeah. and we want to talk to you yeah. about what you're doing and your business we can so, go back to our debate we, we can go back to that another time because I, mean, I don't want you to be here and we don't know what you are yeah. doing to celebrate you right. but so. it's important it's important to sometimes shed light on the past to understand oh yeah of course, course. most and, definitely and you're perfectly right so right so guys so all about Derek Clement. So Derek Clement has been in the industry for over 40 years um, and there's nothing I haven't done. I've actually, I was trained in London School of Fashion. I was trained in the Hounslow Borough College and simultaneously I was trained at Splinters International as a young yeah. apprentice, uh, right up to owning my own shop in Maidaville. I bought my first shop in Maidaville in 1983 uh, for practically yeah. half a million pounds. Mm -hmm. um, then I had a shop in Lewisham at the time, it was called Noir. And I, and I, I also collaborated with a, a, a Nigerian sister in Mayfair and Park Lane. Shop was yeah. called J Jades of Mayfair. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did lots and lots and lots and lots. As per usual, there was something about going back home that was in the corner of my mind. Because okay. if you remember back in the day, we had the Thatcher years. Black people, like today, were feeling very insecure, very uncertain about the future yeah. of the UK. So I packed up my bag, sold my shops, and went back to the Caribbean. I, I went mm -hmm. back to Grenada. I opened oh. four shops and I opened a, a school, an academy. And Whoa. I trained lots of young people throughout the Caribbean, Trinidad, Antigua, Jamaica, Barbados, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it's interesting. After a little while, I took my family back. My children went to my, my elder kid went back to school in the Caribbean. So much so that my biggest daughter now, she's in the islands working for the medical school. She's a journalist. So, um, so it was quite a, a, a great move. And I still have that urge to go back. So I went back to the Caribbean and opened the shops. Having done that, did that, and then sold up shops and went to the United States. Um, oh, um, okay. I so went, you I, sold up. So you sold up over um, in the Caribbean and then that, moved everything over to the that's States. That's right. That's right. Okay. Once the kids was grown, they came back to London. I went. I yeah. went to. I, I went to the States. Did about almost 10, 15 years in the States. I had to go to the States because, of course, that's where you. You, you know, you, you hear about America, you hear about Hollywood, you hear about New York, yeah. and I had to go to the States, and I went mm. to the States. And I have to confess, I needed to go to the States, because what I learned from the American is, the, is that in America, right, uh, unlike Britain in those days, uh, black, the, the average black woman expects you as a stylist to own your own product. You must have your own product. So as I grew oh. my head, it was like, uh, what's up, dear? You got your own product? You got your own shampoo? And I'm thinking, oh. Well, and, and that's how, if you like, in 2000 and, oh, 2000, my daughter's born 2009, 2008, up to 2011, I mm -hmm. remember um, I I began, I got the, the hustle the hustle spirit in terms of branding myself. So I yeah. the whole began in the States and I came back to London in 2011, 2012. And there it really, the whole idea of the product range took off. So now the emphasis right now is more on manufacturing rather than hairdressing. Though I still do hairdressing, I'm mm -hmm. still a hairdresser. We have an academy. We have an interesting thing called MUST, 
uh, that I'll talk to you about later on. Yeah. Um, cool. but so the, the, the emphasis right now for me and my, my business partner on I Rudy Page is all about manufacturing. So we continue in the legacy. We believe that the baton has been passed on to us by Dyke yeah. and Dryden and Splinters. So we're going to yeah. carry the baton on and pass it on again later on when the time is right. Yeah. So that's what we do now. We're manufacturing and we are shedding light on uh, well, what we do, we provide expert advice, information, guidance and support and tips to, our, to the community with regards to hair growth and hair health. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is extensive. Now, even within that, you still have left out some of the bits where, you know, as a stylist, because I, how long have you been doing the stylist? Because it, as you said, you're now onto the manufacturing, but you seem to have come back to what you love. Because when I watch your videos, you're very passionate about what you what you are doing and your your clients. You can tell that they are totally confident in what you say and how you deliver. So I commend you for that. But I want to know how do you maintain the two? Because you know, seeing you on a on a train going to drop something to someone, <laughs> you know, for me that was like, whoa, this man has time to do that. Listen, yeah, that's about fashion. Listen, and that old that is an old template. This the house to house. All the people I've mentioned to you before, the uh the the the, the Comic Cottrell, the Joe yeah. Jackson, all these guys, uh, uh, Madam CJ Walker did, did that. You know, yes, house yeah, to house, yeah. uh and, and 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 the services. Now I still do hairdressing. I, I can't not do hairdressing. And obviously, um, I combine the two together. Obviously, if I'm going to do a cut, I would have to now support the cut with great products. It just makes mm -hmm. sense to marry the two together. Um, and, in, and not just that, but also passing on my skills. So if mm -hmm. you see me do the haircut, uh, it's passing on my skills to other younger hairdressers. Because we were, in our generation, you could argue the pioneers of the haircut. Um, mm. Unfortunately, most hairdressers don't do haircuts. Most hairdressers are great stylists. But the, yeah, cutting, okay. the cutting really came at a time when Splinters would have been one of the revolutionary companies that actually cut hair and Afro hair very well. May I, mm. may I, may I? Mm. Please. Mm. What is the difference between a cut and a stylist? What, what's the difference? I mean, I have not cut nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you remember, and, 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 and if you remember, there was a time when the w black women straightened the hair. Now, don't get me wrong, I support all aspects of afro hair so we yes. support bald we support braid we support lock we support afros we support weaves and wigs wraps yeah. coil and straightened hair now there was a time when the sisters had their hair straightened which was trending at the time back in 70s 80s and yeah, so on that's correct. and what the sisters wanted was the is to make, ensure that the hair moved we call the yeah. shape balance and movement that's now, right. The difference between, uh, there's a difference between... Agree with you. I know nothing right now. You're, you're, you're in a different territory no, than me right now. The reason being is because obviously watching the American programs and our uh, American sisters, you know what I mean? Their head flowing and you're thinking, Bouncy how is that? How are they getting that? You know, so but, that was something to be, you know, to behold. So, but yeah. I have to say that, I have to say that, I have to say that the British hairdressers were by far more in terms of because of the Sassoon connection, because London is really the center of the universe when it comes to cutting hair. Some of the greatest haircuts comes from England. Remember, you've got the Sassoon, you've got the Rusk, you've got the Tudor guys. This, yeah. so, so, and some of the greatest black hairdressers work for white establishment, right? You know who they okay. are, they're great names, they're brilliant, right? And you can't touch those guys for cutting European hair. Likewise, right. we are the, the pioneers for cutting Afro hair because the sisters wanted the hair to move, to bounce, and to have yeah. shape. Right, and those are the three elements of a good haircut shape, balance, and movement. Now, the difference with a West End salon in those days, if you went to a local salon, the, the hair would have been you should know this, my darling the hair would have been stiff and lacquered, right, and not moving, just sprayed and lacquered and stiff. But when it came to splinters, they had a haircut that geometric bob, that yeah, that that's had, right, right? Mm -hmm. the yeah. sisters were, were bouncing. And if you think about it, many sisters wanted their hair to move, move like a white girl now, 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 now listen to me carefully it is mm -hmm. white women who misappropriated afro hair right so we wasn't the sisters wasn't trying to be like them the sisters were trying to be them because you have to remember afro hair 
are the, the you know the genesis of all hair type the bob right. the bob mm. came from afro uh, from black people it was black mm. people who invented the bob so that whole shape thing that you see mary Quarry, well it's in the egyptian um hieroglyphics and everything yeah, you can yeah, actually see that yeah there yeah. you are so when a sister wears her hair straight and she wears a hair in a bob she's not trying to be anything else but herself, not herself. You have to, That's right. because there's there seem to be a, you know often issues with brothers saying to the sisters are you trying to be white hell blood you know no, sorry I'm swear, but hell no black women are just being themselves always thank you well, thank i think you, thank i think you. i think you need to, i need to i think you need to repeat that again black women are just trying to be well themselves because of course it is in the, it's in the dna they remember their ancestors and what they did so when we want when a sister wears a wig she's not trying to be like anybody else when she wear a weave She's not trying to be like everybody else. That is her. That's hers. She created the weave and the wig, right? She created weave and wigs. When she wears her hair condition, when she conditioned her hair and she moisturizes her hair, Madam C.J. Walker invented the conditioner, right? Yes. A brother called Morgan Garrett, Augustus Morgan Garrett, he invented the relaxer. So we are mm -hmm. constantly changing the narrative, changing the game for us, by us, for us. And the straightener comb. I can't remember who invented this. The straightening comb, you know, the one that you put on the fire. And well, the present comb the was actually the the hot the comb. Comb yeah. was invented by a French geezer, but Madame C.J. Walker popularized it. Right, 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 right. There you go. And I think you know? that's the that's the thing, isn't it? And I'm glad that you're here to kind of celebrate exactly what it is us black women, um, you know, do. And to a certain degree as well, I think there's a kind of misconception between black women anyway when it comes yes. to the weaves and and wearing that's the hair because straight we, we and don't the know because we don't have a man like that to just exactly. tell us straight so that's this why is, we this is revolutionary you. We told you. up until this moment yeah. here i didn't put two and two together yeah. because you know a lot of us women think oh you know it's just so that we can get by at work you know in the workplace it's more acceptable and and so on and now obviously there was this great swathe move movement you know for natural hair but as you quite rightly said you know uh, and it kind of in a way brings us back to what we how we entered the conversation in the first place mm -hmm. which is you know uh the cornrows the cane rows right we're making designs there are people there are guys and girls out there making up designs and so on of plaits and curls and whatever Indeed. but they don't know that what they're creating is subconsciously what there's a message yeah, they, yeah, yeah the messaging they're not, from they're not passing on the ago. message yeah. they're just they're just thinking that what they're doing is style yeah. but you know there is a message and if they understood what really happened when they when it was first um not first invented but first used as a code during the slave era, they would understand how important what they're doing is for the black community because it's our identity. You're yes. actually, you know, I it, love to see my But brothers. you know what, I'm gonna say again, thank you very much because that has really, you know what I mean? Uh, I presume has made a lot of women feel a lot more at ease because, you know, we've got these different movements going on, you know, you know, the lock community, the natural community, that you know what, we're all one community with the hair because we invented everything. <laughs> we invented it, right? Yes, so sir. it's lovely to hear you say that. And I'll when say, a, say it again. <laughs> when, a, when a sister wears, uh, look, it's in the consciousness, isn't it? It's, it's, it's deep in the consciousness. And what's interesting about this as well, we've just had the Crown, the Crown Act pass in California. Mm. So the Crown Act pass was passed in California to uh prevent if you like afrophobia or discrimination for afro hair okay it's interesting in 1786 there was a law that forbade black women from wearing the hair in it, uh, it's called the Tig tignan law tignan law and and that okay. law and that law was only passed because when the uh so-called and i don't like to use the word slaves because i know that we were not slaves uh mm. there was a war and we were nothing more than prisoners of war it's in, in it's in many documented um, yes. um in many documents they often refer to sometimes mistakenly as a war uh when europe carved up africa they went there to to fight mm -hmm. so um after that emancipation the sisters in louisiana in the united states 
were free. And so they, they were now walking around the community with this gorgeous hair, this plume, gorgeous mm -hmm. afros. And the, their white contemporary was absolutely jealous of them. This is a mm -hmm. fact, this is documented. You could Google it, yeah. right? They were jealous of them. And so they somehow believed that the black women was going to entice their, their men, their suitors, their husbands away from them. So mm -hmm. they passed the law, and all this is about hair, mind you, they passed mm -hmm. the law to forbid black women from wearing their gorgeous hair yeah. styled in public. So they had to mm. then wear uh, head wraps. Ah, oh. and, and then we took that over as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting how, you know, almost, this is 1786, now it's 2021, a law is now passed to, to, to literally, for, you know, it's called the Crown Law, the Crown yeah. Act. Amazing, isn't it? And of course, you have mm. things like Afro Hair Day. So, I mean, our hair, and it's interesting, the, the powers that be understand the power of Afro Hair. If you remember mm. the days when every brand that was owned by white people was called African Pride, African Queen. Mm. Isn't yeah. it interesting how, when you mention the word African to many people, there's a kind of, oh, I'm not African, whatever, whatever. Yes, yes, yeah, you know, yeah. sort of, but, but, but in the consciousness, if the product, says it's the brand identity. says African, right? We rush to it because we know in identity. our consciousness that that's where everything hair comes from. Hair mm. growth products. If you think of certain countries in I think of East Africa where uh, you got things like the chebe butter, which is yeah. those are all natural hair growth enhancers, mm. right? The argan oil, the shea butters. Yeah. Everything for hair, not just for hair growth, but for hair health, comes from Africa. And other people use it. Right, mm, yeah, exactly. and buds are yeah. indeed great natural hair growing enhancers. You know, you know, there one of the things. Question, oh, sorry, yeah, there is a question that um, uh, uh, one of the members has uh, just. I'll, I'll share it here now. Just asking a quick question before we go yeah. on. Uh, do you have a take on why white people like to touch Afro hair? I think deep in the consciousness is that. Have you heard white people's views on this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. You know, for eons, this has been a beef with, with, with the sisters and other people. Uh, even my neighbor, who is an Asian woman, so how, somehow she can't keep her hands off my daughter's hair. My little daughter, we've got, she's got this two great big Afro puffs. Mm. And it's interesting, um, when my, my five-year-old goes to school, her hair yeah. is a big issue because it just looks so majestic, so regal. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. is, it is indeed a crown. And I think that's mm -hmm. what it is, sisters. It is... Your hair is your crown and the glory. And since you are the queens of life, they're just trying to touch the crown. That's what mm. they're, they're just trying to touch the crown. They right. have to touch you the know. crown. They have to bow. And, and, I think, I think touching, the, touching your hair is like, they, you have to bow. You have to bow. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the thing yes. is, uh, whilst we're laughing at that, really, it, it that is actually, you know, a truth. That is our heritage. That is our, you know, our pathway. And, I, and you're quite right in what you're saying there. And I think we kind of laugh at that to a certain degree because we're thinking, oh, you know, I know we say that and, and so on, but it is actually a fact, it's true, you know? And I think you're sharing this knowledge with a lot of us here that in terms of uh, even down to, um, you know, the hair products and who started, you're, you're, you're giving us a lot of knowledge there where maybe some of us women were thinking, you know, I feel a little bit guilty wanting to get a relaxer, you know, but I'm realizing the most of us that, you know, we are the trailblazers and always have been the trailblazers. Mm -hmm. well, we're what, we're, to we're watched. So what what so, we do is what they follow. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I want to stop on that. Yeah. 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 And I'm, yes, I, yes. I, you know what? I'm determined. <laughs> I am determined. I want to start even by saying to you, you have started your own product, your own brand. Yeah. And why? And what have you got? What's special about it? Right. So, so that we can tell the people. Yeah. Um, thank you. Did, uh, uh, thank you, Hugh. So uh, that said, that said, so I've created the Derek Clement system. And I think the reason why I created a system is because uh, the system haven't got a clue. Um, they've been, you know, there's a lot of information out there, almost information glut but they need support, they need guidance, they need help, right? They need tips. So what I've done, I've created a system. The system is based on, is, this, is divided into three tiers. And the reason why I've done the tier system is because your hair needs 
fundamentally three things that allows it to grow and grow successfully. And remember, right. sisters, Afro hair, contrary to popular belief, grows longer than anybody else. Right? Mm -hmm. but, but since we're not in our habitat and we have to conform to this habitat, the water is harsh, the water is hard, it's yeah. recycled eight times, all of that is impacting on our hair. So when you see the sisters struggling for hair growth, the food is not right, the food is wrong. We left our foods behind, we left our pair yeah. behind. So, and, and listen, so I'm doing a Sankofa thing. I'm going back and I'm creating sustainable products using sustainable ingredients. So we've got the Jamaican black castor oil. Those are indeed sustainable for the hair because they've got the elements that your hair needs. It has, it, it needs three fundamental things. It needs the, 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 the omega-3, 6 and 9 fatty yeah. acids mm -hmm. that castor oil has. Uh, it has things, it's a humectant, a great humectant. It's a great, um, um, uh, 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 emul it's, it's emulsifier, it's a great yeah. uh, occlusive. So what I've done is guys, I've done, so let's go to tier one. Tier one consists of the shampoo. So what I say to my, my clients, one of the things I think the sisters have done a lot in the past, they've over shampooed the hair. It's part of our DNA, we like to wash, we like to scrub, we like to yeah. rinse, we like to wash the hair and, and hair that squeak, that's not good. That's damaging for your hair because shampoos oh. by the very nature, not my shampoo, but shampoos by the very nature are made from very uh, nefarious chemicals. And they're called, right, there you are. They, they are, you know, dodgy stuff that's almost carcinogenic and very harsh. The reason right. why the shampoo lathers, there are ingredients in that cause the lathering, but it also harms the hair. Okay. That's the sulfate, right? We call them to make it make life short. We call them parabens. That has no sulfate. Yeah. It has no parabens. And I said to my clients, do just one shampoo. Don't shampoo three, four, five, seven times because you're right. so clean. Shampoo the hair just once. So that's my shampoo. That's in the tier one. And and this can you all... can you put it closer to the um the camera? Right. That's it. Yeah. Tier one. We right. also show the picture as well of the right. product. So yeah. um, so yeah, I've got that there. Think about this now. You so. Because you like to shampoo your hair, we continue to shampoo the hair using what we call the co-wash. Now, the co-wash is a shampoo that doesn't lather. It conditions the hair as it's shampooing yeah. because after hair needs more conditioning, more moisturizing than any other hair type. Okay, based because of, its, of the nature, it's a unique texture. It's coily, it's kinky, it's fabulous, it's elastic. It's it's beautiful, right? So once you've done that, then the final thing in the tier one would be the conditioner. So you've right. got three things, tier one, shampoo, co-wash, and condition. You've got to, and that's the system. Shampoo, co-wash, okay. condition. Right, so, these are called- so, so, so before you go ahead, because I'm gonna ask, because I'm sure I'm, there's gonna be a lot of ladies out there saying, okay, one minute, I'm told that I've, to, to, the hair is clean when you yes. hear that squeak, right? Oh. Now you're saying, no, that's, that's, so that's the difficulty for us because we're trying to figure out what is best. We all know sometimes our hair is not growing for whatever reason. And uh, so you're saying that so to, if you're picking up a, sh a shampoo, your shampoo, it cannot contain any parabens. Is that correct? Mustn't contain parabens because we're going back now. We have, you have to remember, all right. of this, all of this is hinged on the concept of supporting our immune system. So it's all, it's all about the well-being. Right. So we have to yep. ensure that moving forward into this new reset, we've got to keep our products as wholesome as possible. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much. So, so that's the, the first. The first. free tier system. Yeah, right. So that's, that's tier, tier one. Now, and this tier one is all about the rinse off. These have to be rinsed off. Okay. Once you've rinsed off the hair, we then go to tier two. Tier two are leave-ins. And we start tier two with a marvelous and unique product from Zimbabwe. This is from the Boabab tree. And you have to remember, it's in Africa, all the products, Af every, almost every fruit, almost every tree in Africa is about uh, hair enhancers. The Boabab has loads and loads of nutrients, vitamins in it. And so what I use that for, this is like a pre- moisturizing agent so you've yeah. drizzle this on the hair when before drizzle this on the hair 
to, to mm -hmm. moisturize the hair, to feed the hair. All right. That is that's that's a part of tier two. The next step would be to get the hydration. We call this a hydrator. Okay. And this works in all hair types, not just natural hair. It also works for hair that's relaxed, uh, hair that's locked, hair that's okay. braided, afro, all hair types. So you get right. the you get the this is a hydrator. And the reason why I say hydrator, the hair needs three things. It needs hydration and moisturization and nutrient. So this is a nutrient and this is a hydrator, and you add the moisturizer. So what you do right. is you put this, you put this together in your palm like this right and that's the milk the hydrator milk and the moisturizer milk in the palm of the hand like this bear mm -hmm. in mind you've already moisturized the hair with the with the yeah. nutrient because hair needs moisturization and hydration and you rub it together and that goes all over your hair yeah or your beard if you wanted to your beard i was gonna ah. ask you about the man them. don't worry i was gonna ask you about that i was gonna let you be for the moment <laughs> ladies <laughs> we're not asking about the man them thing <laughs> okay but well, you, now you see you've got something now then well that's i'm now <laughs> i'm now listening and, and, and you see how the comb goes through Hi, the moisturizer. Well, well. It, yes. yeah, it goes through no no like fighting it just goes mm -hmm. through the hair effortlessly yeah. And that's tier two. Right. Now, these are leavings, and it's for all hair type, relaxed right. hair and afro hair. Now, in the tradition of food and feeding the hair, we used to use the word grease in the old days. Yeah, I don't like that's the right. word grease. The word grease to me is synonymous to petrol and petroleum. Yes. And yeah. a lot of our people used to use petroleum. And mm -hmm. that's the byproduct was grease. I don't say grease. I say food. So in tier three is a leave. The, that's the feeding now. You start tier two with what we call a hair and scalp food. This is made from hemp, all the way from Jamaica. It's made from hemp. This is the this is mm -hmm. the, the food. Hair and, right. hair and scalp. No, sorry. This one is a regrowth. Hair and regrowth. And this is hemp. It's a gorgeous hemp and and mm -hmm. um, shea butter and vitamin right. E. It's a great consistency. That goes into the scalp and that goes into the hairline. And the reason why this is crucial, one of the biggest problem for the sisters in this time and this age is cicatricial mm. alopecia, often caused by inflammation. Inflammation yeah. because we're eating the wrong foods. We're in the wrong climate, we're eating the wrong foods. And inflammation triggers alopecia. So you see okay. lots of sisters that's going bald in the crown. That's uh, yeah. the true alopecia. And it used to be called present cold alopecia. And then there's another type of alopecia that's very pandemic at the moment is uh, traction alopecia because yeah. the braids are too tight. Yeah, it's, it's, and yeah. the, lock, the, lock is pull, the lock is so heavy, it's pulling the, the hair down. So you've got traction. So that's a great product for traction alopecia and cicatricial alopecia. All right. Okay. That goes into the and scalp. is it good for looks as well? Can I use Ox, that in my all, looks? All hair type, okay. Right. And, okay. And you could you could do the old fashioned thing, like taking it in the in your fingers. And yeah. You, you put it in the hair on the hairline. Uh, okay. For the guys, we got one for the guys as well. K seven seven. I'll explain mm. it to you later on. That goes in the beard, and also my products goes on the skin as well. I use it on my skin, on my face. Oh, on my weird. lips everywhere okay because it's wow because, because it's natural shea butter is jamaican black castor oil those are all great he you know he met it right there's a and then of course you've got the other one in tier three we've got the hair and scalp food this the first one is called the hair growth treatment because it's broken from the alopecia yeah this is the food this is also a great heat protector because lots of sisters do pressing comb or silk yeah. press. So you can use that to protect the hair. All right. I'm a hairdresser, so I need products to use on my customers here successfully. So I created yeah. all of this. I these are all formulated by me. And I'll explain to you my pharmacist later on. And if you and finally, what you do, you've got the Jamaican black castor oil sheen. This is a wonderful spray. It's a sheen. And you give it's, it's like this. You spray this on on your, on your beard, on your hair. Yeah. It's a, again, it's marvelous, fa fabulous uh, consistency, great sheen, <coughs> provides luster for the hair. 
All right, and that yeah. is that is the 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 three tier, but it's also for the lock. We got the three in one lock oil. So if you got the lock, you've got dreadlocks, yeah. locks, and look at the nozzle. I designed the nozzle so, so you can apply it into the part into the areas all over. Oh, which the is what we need, honestly. Right. That's, yeah, that's for lock. Yeah, that's up in okay. there. Yeah. Right. And for the guys, we've got the lock oil for the guys. It's called K77. Kemet 77. Right. Yeah. Nice name. Good Kemet name. Kemet 77. That's what it's all about. That's right. People look it up. People look it up. That's right. That's right. We have the uh we have our own Christmas. You know what the, our own Christmas is? We don't we don't use Christmas anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what our black Christmas is all about, don't you? Yes, yeah. <laughs> good oh right. no that's lovely they're great products so where can people find them where can you people locate the, the website is on there uh www.hairx one word hair h-a-i-r-e-x dot com okay oh right. not dot uk oh, dot, let me put that oh, sorry dot, dot my fault dot uk dot uk yes sorry, dot uk thanks, yes. thanks lorraine dot uk lovely no that's but, wonderful that's but, wonderful right. and like, yeah i mean as i said you know we've, you know you shared the, and i'll put the products the product range um is is up here everyone so um just uh, pop over to the website yeah. and uh and give that and get out the go now what I'm going to ask you, Derek, is obviously I see you going to people's homes and uh, giving them treatment. So is that something that you do quite often or is that uh, a specific for a specific client or? Um, when what, we had the, what the circumstances? Yeah, what's the circumstances around to, you starting to, that? Yeah. Well, so we have a, something called um, Derek Clement House Party. Uh, Derek Clement House Party. And that's what we do. Derek Clement House Party. And people ask me to come. Clients call me up and Derek, I can't come. Would you come to my house? Um, I've had I've got husbands requesting to me that I come to do their wife's hair because it's the birthday, it's the anniversary. Yeah. Um, I've got husbands telling me, D come to the children's hair. Um, I'm not coming to the hairdressers, um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's something that was born out of that request by the clients. And of course, with the COVID and all of that people were obviously restricted and so yeah. they asked me to come to the house but by the way it's a big industry not just for us but for the europeans as well um right. they do a lot of house calls there's a massive organization i won't go into it but the barbers are now doing mobile hairdressing you see lots of the barbers yeah. are doing mm -hmm. that so that's become that's trending at the moment and okay. so i when you see me bring a product to a client it is because she wants it now i ship products I use Hermes, I use the post office, I use DHL. We post stuff all, all over the place, America, Jamaica, Grenada, Barbados, all over London. But yeah. when my client says to me, D, I want something now, I'm on that train. I, yeah. I take the train, as, as we used to say back in the day, let the train take the train. It's easy yeah. to the train. Exactly. You know? yeah. <laughs> I'm on my train and I go any part of London. I was in a place called Benfleet. Is it Benfleet or? I've heard, heard of that, yes, that yeah. Heard right, of Fleet, way yes. up in the country. My client, Derek, I can't come come to get my hair done. And I need products. I got my bag. I was up there. Uh, I, I go everywhere, wherever the clients need. And I'm also going to New York on the 28th of June to do right. to the same thing. Because we, okay. have, we have fans. We have lots of users in the States, in Connecticut, in New York. Um, they live there for quite a while. So lots yeah. of clients, very loyal clients. Um, they they want that kind of one to one service, yeah. and that again, I, I listen, guy, that was part of our legacy, our hair story, our lineage. Yeah, Madam yeah. C.J. Walker and Annie Malone did exactly those things, right? Door to Comic door. Control, they made their money going to the homes. Yeah. So it's called the Derek Clement House Party. What you do? A bunch of sisters get together, and they invite me to their homes. Right, and uh, we could go to the park, we go to the back garden, we go to the front room. And you bring your friends, and I'll give you the information, expert information, advice, support, and guidance. That's what I do. Well, um, we are going to be looking at doing that, Derek. But um, before we even go there, to just tell people, generally speaking, I've, when Derek said he's going to New York, he's going to America. I quickly wrote him in quickly. I, I, I didn't mess about. No, no beavering around the place. I said, we are going to 
go yes. live with him yes. so we yes. can see what he's doing with our American cousin yeah, so we can actually open the door. So BBR are going to be there live. We will tell you the times and dates when Derek gets it organized so we will let you know and you can actually yeah, see exactly. how he does, what you'll, he does. You'll be live yeah, in, you'll be be you'll be live in New York and Connecticut. Uh, um, Absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. I so, so, I mean, obviously, we've not got too much longer uh, left, Derek, because we can speak all night. We but can, and if you want your... to stay, we'll stay. We're, we're good. <laughs> no, don't worry about time. Yeah, don't worry about time. Yeah, I love let my wife. Also, let me also explain to you guys, we have the Academy. We have some a unique system called MUST. And, yes. Um, yeah, which is what I was going to come back to. Actually, I did yeah, write that down. <laughs> we need, we need Rudy Page and I, my business partner. We go back mm. over forty years. Rudy and I says we have our friendship and our uh, our friend in in the industry. Rudy is in Dyke and Dryden, I was in Splinters. Uh, we took the kids from different parts of the world, but because yeah. of the industry, we all get together. And in those days, loads of young people all working together. We, you know, it's an ecosystem. Mm. And um. We got we say we got 85 years of hairdressing experience. Rudy was in manufacturing mm. and in hairdressing. And we met up, we met up at an interesting event at the Jamaican High Commission. Rudy had plans for Dyke and Dryden. I had plans for Winston. Because those are our we are the proteges of those those two let's call, let's call them our parent companies. Uh, uh, that's right. And in yeah. speaking with Rudy. It really says, man, I'm writing the book. He said, well, I'm writing the book for uh, for Splinters, about Splinters. <laughs> and so we just thought, you know what? Why not collaborate? Let's bring it together. And, mm. uh, and that's it. I haven't seen Rudy for about 40 years since that time. Oh, my and word. Since our young days. And so the MUST campaign, it means that we manufacture, which is us collectively. We yep. use, right? That's us collectively. We train the pro we train and we and of course MUST and we sell. So what we want our sisters to do in the Derek Clement house party, you take the product and you sell it to your friends. You invite me to your house as a guest and of course uh, in the office, in the in the park, wherever you want to be, and we provide that information, uh, advice, and guidance as well as you can invest in the product, invest in the brand, and that's wow. what it's all about. So it's a it's a form of franchising, and people can make. A living from doing that for themselves. Yeah, yeah well, think of Fubu. well, think of Fubu. Remember Fubu for you by yes. you. Mm -hmm. That's that acronym there. It's all about. It's all about that. The muscle. Wow, brain. wow, that is that is phenomenal. Because you know, I think a lot of people actually, um, when doing their own business, what you find is their business is their business, and it's not meant to be shared. And so, to be able to open the door to our community, to our sisters. To say, look, this is what I have. This is what I'm providing. I'm giving you the information mm -hmm. and the tools. You can step out there and do your thing as well. You Listen, know that is fabulous. You, if we don't do that, as I said, the industry is worth 2.5 billion. L'Oreal, L'Oreal, one of the biggest manufacturers, of one of the well, you know, the giant, the colossus mm -hmm. of hair globally. They own multiple black brands. L'Oreal mm -hmm. isn't happy with the fact that Afro Hair is making so much money and there are multiple black salons. I think there's 355,000 black salons in the UK. And L'Oreal mm. is thinking, we're not even getting 5% of that. What's going mm. on? So, the, the, so they're asking themselves, well, we need to have a bigger piece of the pie. And so, so the reason why we do what we do, we're inviting you guys to invest. You can invest, to ask questions. Mm. Yeah. What's wrong with yeah. our people, man? No one comes mm. to me and say to me, no, let's, let's... you approach me, you know, you know, you know, look, I'm there doing the. We don't think of the hustle, the money. I the, think, yeah. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. Both, Maybe. both, both. Just a second. Let's talk about investment. Let's talk about investment. What does that mean to the average black person, yeah, who wants to start up in business, not too sure, got a bit, little bit of change in the background? How does that, you know, because when we hear about investment, this is new to us per se. So, investment for us is not for the not for the average person and that is where we have to do an educational aspect of what investment means and what you can gain from it it's not about investment for you know i put a tenner in i expect to get 20 pounds tomorrow morning yeah it's about long term it's about looking at you know um a legacy type of investment that's the education part that we need to do because what you are doing there you're actually providing people with the beginning of their legacy and the investment 
while they might see as um, expensive, but they'll go and buy a pair of trainers for 200 pounds, 300 pounds. Oh, yeah? yeah, but not invest in themselves for 500 to, you know, to be part of um, a company that is actually facilitating their needs. So how do we explain that to people, that aspect of investment? And and that's and that's for another conversation because that's something that we could simply put together myself, really page and myself and yourself will explain, we'll go through the whole okay. process, procedure. We're all about transparency. Yeah. Look at the end of the day, right? As I, as I started when I started the conversation, I said that this in look, it's tangible. You investing into Derek Clement over 40 years of hairdressing experience, not just a yeah, product exactly. buying, but hair, right? It's 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 you know who I am, right? We've got mm. the product line. We've got the chemist. We've got the factory. Everything is set up, right? We, you have to, you have, you, you have to remember this industry is a, it's a giant of an industry. And if you're not careful, what tends to usually happen, as we know, other people come into it and buy it from us. And then we mm -hmm. will say to ourselves, oh my God, he sold it to you know who. But the reason mm -hmm. why we sold it, because you're not, you're not interested, you're not asking, you can't see the vision. I've got friends who's got money. They'll never say to me, well, D, I've got a five grand, hold on to that. And that's for the children, whatever. I mean, we need, we need that conversation. We need that, we need that dialogue. And that's something we can do here on a separate conversation. We could discuss. Absolutely. We well, well I'm, as I said to you, as I said to you, this today is just the first of many conversations. This is the first. Because the, first. the learning is to talk, to hear, to yes. understand, and then to assimilate that information to sure. then put it out there. Well, you, you know? know what? I'm going to mix it up a bit because I think it's in some respects, it's not a case of people perhaps don't want to help or invest. It's just that they're not in a position to presently, you know? And as I said, I truly believe, you know, it's taken this long for black people to a certain degree to understand where their footing is in this world and in this country, all right? So from the, the ground up, things are starting to grow. People are starting to see, people are starting to do. And I truly believe that, you know, come next year and a, a, a few years after that, black people in themselves are gaining the confidence to A, speak up, to say, you know, I am not going to rely on the banks. I'm not going to um, uh, uh, do something that I don't particularly want to. And I'm going to be unapologetically going to support and invest in my own businesses. I know sometimes it may not seem that it's quick enough, but I just think that we just have to just I, I think another take way, time. I think another take way to, that we have and to look at it is that you and I, we have family. We've got trusted friends. We can, if we haven't got a set of money to do, we can say to our friends, just like Derek has done, collaborate yeah, yeah and put the money together when it be i can put in 100 you can put in 200 mm. and whatever and we can say look derek this is what we've got as yeah. a collective how do we make this work yeah, exactly. yeah? it's about the collaboration not yeah. just about where i am mm. today it's about where i want to be in the future yeah, exactly. and generation, what I, generation. Yeah. well as well, somebody's look, just said here uh, you know people don't know what they don't know you know that includes both business owners as well as customers but the tide is changing. You know, I totally agree. Um, you know, it's it's a slow burn. It infuriates me at times. But I do truly believe that there is a tide change. And that is why the, pe the you know, the companies, as you've mentioned, are now sitting up really <laughs> quite they're paying straight attention. now. They're, they're paying, paying attention. They're paying very good attention now. So if that's starting to happen, that tells you that, you know, people are going to consider what they need to do. But as you said, that's for another conversation again, Absolutely. isn't it? And remember, guys, we came, we come from a legacy of trust, a legacy of collaboration, a legacy of making and saving money. We, we've had the susu. I mean, how, how many children mm. of our age that would have got our, our car, our house, our business from the susu? My mother took my money from me in the mm. 70s every week. And after one year, my mother gave me five thousand pounds, right? Wow! And 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 that was a suicide amongst her her friends, her colleagues. Mm -hmm. And I never forget the day she the, 
my, my, my mother's best friend, they came to the house with a bag of money. I, it, was, it was in a bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they went into the front room. And I didn't know this because obviously she was asking me for money. I, Derek, I need money for the housekeep. And I'm thinking, oh, Ma, I got to buy this. Because <laughs> yeah. I need, and, and do you know, again, I, I call my mother the matriarch. And, you know, those are the things that she, she did to, to her children. And so at the end of the year, I could see it right now, 1982, 83, she called me into the front room. Miss, her friend locked the door, came to the front room, sat me down, and they began to count. <laughs> and I, went, I couldn't believe it. Five grand. And I remember taking that money and I went into the 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 um S, the the bank in the well, of course, is the in the bank in in in, in Hallett yeah. Square in the West mm. End. And I put my money there and I got the mortgage uh, uh, ASAP. And I went to Sudbury Hill, uh, 97 Cavendish Avenue, and I bought a massive uh, mock Tudor. I was only 24 With years it. of age. Look right? That. And that's the thing, isn't it? I was mm. able to buy uh, not just my home, but I then invested into my salon in those days in, 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 in Made of Ale. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, we can't be, and that was, and that was sort of simple saving system that we were doing because, you know, the mainstream bank wasn't keen yeah. on lending us money <laughs> so you know, this, you know we could re repeat and replicate that same concept mm. this time with products amongst ourselves well Why there are know? there are a few companies at no, the moment great. a couple of black companies is actually starting up doing exactly that in terms of the partner and they do it independently so you know we need to look at that there's also um the one love lottery so you know we can actually yeah. get into that we're actually supporting our own while having a little lottery system. So, you know, people, exactly. there are many options, many ways for us to work together sure. to get onto a scheme such as Derek is providing for us. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah. um, it's absolutely it's wonderful. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and I've really? seen all the products in the back there <laughs> and then yeah. and created them. Well, I'm going to put some of them up again. I'm going to put it up again now. I mean, this Sorry. is the, everyone. These are, these are the products here. And as uh, you can see, you can contact uh, and get in contact with uh, um, Derek by um, the website Derek, as well. Okay. Um, and oh, I'll You're stuff. squeezing Derek out of the way. I'm squeezing him out <laughs> for the moment because I'm showing some of the products that he has here available. But look, he, he neatly put himself, you see that? That's a man who knows about marketing. <laughs> I would just some handsome young person there. What one? <laughs> so it's for men exactly. And women. It's for men and women, guys, and um, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. That's what we do. We are passionate mm. about our community. We love our people, and 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 you know, we're special here. I mean, even your program this evening, both of you. I mean, this is absolutely remarkable. It's delightful to reach out and to collaborate and to share. Uh, yes, I, 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 absolutely. I do, you know, update update the community. Absolutely, brilliant, lovely. Thank you so much. Well, Thank it has you. been a pleasure. Even though we didn't get to cover all what we wanted no, to cover, no, there'll tonight. be there'll be part two, but three, and four. Worry not yourself. That, yeah, having said that, I mean, you know, the gems that you've dropped this evening, you know, as as uh, somebody quite rightly said, you don't, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So where it came with in regards to our women's hair. You know that was uh, quite something, and thank that you was, very much for sharing that. Yeah. Because a, a lot of people over a, a period of time will look back at this and say, "Do you know what? I did not know that," and that will yes. fill them with confidence going forward. So, so, I mean, of course, I'm going to ask you one last. Yeah, sorry, you're saying. No, I was about to say that um, it's so interesting at this time in in our lives, in our history, in our in our trajectory, in our awokenness. You see how uh, because again because of the COVID. Uh, um, we talk about hair health and hair well-being. So our emphasis is essentially on the well-being of your hair. But sisters, bear in mind, as I keep saying, hair grows at a cellular level, not externally. Yeah. Products don't make your hair grow. It's only there to to sustain and to, 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 to maintain yeah, the, the hair shaft. But mm -hmm. you've got to focus on the inside. You've got to eat the right food. You've got to be holistic. You've got to be physically, mentally, and spiritually whole. Yeah. And in this particular time, you know, we're doing a Sankofa thing. We're going back to get the foods and the, the Irish moss and, and all of the foods. I'm using charcoal at the moment because I did some dodgy things the other day because of the COVID system. 
I have to go back and get back the real stuff. I'm using generated charcoal. I'm using something called zeolite. I'm using everything I need to keep my body sustained yeah. and mm. and supported to make sure the immune system, because your immune system is also attached to your hair. If your immune system is challenged, your hair will break. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Wow. And it also because you have to remember pure poor, poor immunity triggers lupus, it triggers alopecia. And and what does that what causes that? Inflammation. And we've got to watch the foods we eat, get rid of the dairy, get rid of the, the red meat, uh, consume more of what you you've you've done in the past. Go back to the ancestral eating habits. Yeah. We've had great avatars like Dr. Sabi who came That's and right. taught us yes. everything about foods. So it's up to us now to to ensure that we protect ourselves. Mm, and absolutely. at the same time, protect your hair simultaneously. Oh, God bless Listen, you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Amazing. I mean, I have learned so much. Uh, I I really am yeah, astounded. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure, guys. Um, Pleasure. We are going to come back to you very soon. <laughs> and we'll be informing well. everyone. And if we have to do specials on different nights, c'est la vie. Yeah, we will do it. Indeed. Yeah? But it has so, been a pleasure. Thank um, you, Derek. Once again, I'm telling you, the next time you come, I'm, I've got a range of other questions. <laughs> I, know, I know that. I think we'll have to send them to you first. That will yes. unlock loads more nuggets of information that you'll yes. share with us. Yeah, but before you go, obviously, uh, everyone, thank you very much. You, uh, myself and you have been away for a little while. Yeah. Uh, but we're back now. We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay? We're doing it as best as so we can. So we're going to end this evening by saying thank you again to, uh, to Derek. Derek, thank you so much. But before you go, everybody, we're just going to share uh, some of our business of the week with you uh, before we sign off. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, stay with us. And, until uh, then, take care. Derek, focus. blessing. Take it's care of yourself. It's a pleasure. Pleasure, guys. Thank you very much. Take care now. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.